Hello guys, as you can see here I have figured out how to control the infrared CQ Control 32 tractors. So in this video what I'm going to do is tell you how the signal is composed. So just to show you that we have all the features here, we have our steering, we have our lights, so that's obviously only the little ones at the front and the rear lights, the tail lights. So that's that. Then we have indicators. I've set all the um, controls up the same as I would my normal tractors as well. So um, it's exactly the same as any of my other models. But you can see we have our indicator there on the joystick and the other indicator is the other joystick. And then both joysticks together puts the hazard lights on. So that's fairly straightforward. Uh, obviously we have drive and it's um, variable speed drive obviously we do have control it's not just on so the control isn't as fine as it is with my other models but it's still it's pretty good I'm not sure if the CQ controller does it any finer than that but uh, uh, I can check that out now in a second but anyway the uh, here's the lifting arms you can see we can control them with our encoder here so we have pretty fine control over that as well I can make very small adjustments to the height of the rear link there or I can just put it straight up so let's just uh, compare the speed of the motor to this um, control 32 controller so No, I think we have the same uh, adjustability of speed as we did with my controller. There is better control from my other models uh, with regard to the speed. It's probably a case of the motor driver that I'm using is more advanced than the one that Siku had available at the time, or the one that they chose to use. So that might be the reason why it seems to take off a little bit compared to how slow we can go with mine. Or it could be that they didn't want the little kind of whining noise that you get from my motors. So because my Arduino is ramping the motor up from a duty cycle of zero, you can hear a little whine as the frequency increases or the duty cycle increases. So maybe CQ wanted to avoid that noise and just skip that first little bit and decided that that was around about the minimum speed they needed. I haven't implemented this little dashboard screen for the Control32 tractor just yet. Um, or the, the various uh, gears that I had for my other models so obviously when I have this finished I'll it'll show this screen and we'll be able to select a low speed gear a high speed gear and all that stuff the same as all the other tractors the front and rear link servos will show up here and whatever the things the other functions on the controller do they're all set up uh, in my new controller but I've not to test them with the four, um, the four like trailers and stuff on the back of the CQ Control 32 models so let's take a look at the infrared signal. So we can see that we have a lot of little groups of pulses. Those pulses are all separated by a space of around about 64 milliseconds. If we zoom into one of those pulses, we'll see that there are actually 57 smaller pulses. Now if we zoom into the first pulse, we'll see that that's actually made up of 20 even smaller pulses. And these smaller pulses, they come on for about 1.2 microseconds. So our first group of pulses is a group of 20 pulses. Now if we take a look at the next group of pulses, we'll see that that is made up of 25 pulses. And once you go through all the other pulses, you'll find that they all vary between 15 and 25 pulses as well. So it's safe enough to assume that the very first pulse that was only 20 smaller pulses long is a header pulse to signify that here comes the start of the data. So with that in mind we can remove the first pulse from our understanding of the signal. So if we remove that we now have 56 pulses and 56 can be divided by 8 which is the size of a byte. So that leaves us with 7 bytes each of which is 8 bits long. So I made a note of a couple of different uh, positions of the controller, uh, the steering turned left, the steering turned right, the lights on, the lights off. So what I found was when you look at the first byte, if we move from left to right, the first bit 
is a 1, the next 3 are zeros. So we have 1, 0, 0, 0. So that's the 7th, the 6th, the 5th and the 4th bit. Then the 3rd bit is this switch. The 2nd bit is this switch. The 1st bit is this switch. And the 0 bit is this switch. So our lights are on the 0 bit of the 1st byte. The next byte then is the throttle. Now, what CQ did was make the tractor stop when you send a byte of with a value of 0. Then when you send a byte from 1 to 127, the vehicle moves in reverse. Now, 1 is the slowest reverse speed, 127 the fastest reverse speed. Then when you go from 128 to 255, that's the forward speed sentence. So 128 will be the slowest and 255 is the fastest. The next byte is the steering and I've done this in pretty much the same way that I do it on all my tractors. When the potentiometer is in the central position that's the steering in the middle. When you turn it right we'll say it goes to 255 to the right, the steering turns to the right, goes to the left uh, which value will go to zero, it turns to the left. Now they have limited the value for this byte between 50 and 205 I think so I've set those limits on my controller too so my potentiometer sending the same byte for the full movement of my thumbstick here so that was fairly normal uh, pretty easy to predict the next byte then is for this potentiometer here which controls the link servo but it also includes one of the bits for these um, indicator lights so you have 8 bits in a byte, but they've used 7 to describe the potentiometer position and, and the final bit to describe the light. So the 0 bit describes one of the indicators and the other 7 bits describe the potentiometer position in much the same way as the steering did. But they've limited this control to a value between, I think it was 30 and 80 in decimal, something like that. So it's over a much smaller range than the steering uh, servo there. The next control then is this um, potentiometer here forwards and backwards. Uh, this one is exactly the same as the uh, as the steering. You get the full range of motion of a servo. I assume that's for the control of a front link on some CQ Control 32 model. I'm not really familiar with uh, Control 32 models but from looking at the PCB um, there's clearly an output that's controlled by this that controls a servo and you get the full range of motion because I've tested it with the John Deere 6920S uh, control board so there must be a CQ Control 32 model with, uh, with control over the front link but this byte also includes the bit for the other indicator so seven of the bits describe the front link uh, servo position and the other bit turns on and off the indicator the next byte then, the second last one is just this value across here and that's all 8 bits describe this value I presume that is for a trailer or something then because uh, it doesn't have any effect on anything on the John Deere 6920S control board the final byte is the tricky one um, I could see that but every measurement I took was affecting this final byte so I guessed it was a checksum and uh, it turns out I was right so how I figured out the checksum was I took the other 6 bytes I uh, rearranged their uh, bits so that the the most significant bit was now the least significant and vice versa then I added the bytes from top to bottom uh, all six of them and uh, done the bit swap back again so I, again the I switched the most significant bit with the least significant bit and that gave me the result of the checksum so all I had to do was uh, just do that in the code and um, then I had full control over the model without any difficulty. So that will be included in the code for the controller anyway, that's uh, fairly obvious. But for anyone who's not using my controller, you'll just have to open up the library and copy that section of code into a sketch and you'll be able to control your uh, Control32 models from an Arduino as well, no problem. Obviously the benefit for me and why i done this was that I don't have to switch controllers now to switch between my models and these infrared Control32 models. I can just um, you know, select it in the menu here from the same controller. So that's pretty ideal for me.
So that's how the signal for the Control32 models is made up, well for the infrared models is composed. So uh, I have the board here for the John Deere 6920S and what I'm going to do in a follow up video is just show you where the different um, components are connected. So you have your um, rear link servo, your front link servo, your motor, um, your steering servo, your LEDs and I'm not sure if it'll end up being one video or a couple of videos but I'll show you how to add different lights to this kind of board and uh, how you can add your own front link servo if you have a CQ Control32 servo anyway how you can add your own front link servo to one of these control boards well this is the control board from the infrared models it might be different for the uh, wireless models so this might only be relevant to that but the lights should be pretty much the same idea I think so if you like this video make sure and hit the like button and if you have any comments or suggestions let me know below the video or, or head over to the forum and I think that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching.